This video is all about the CV tier, or the consonant vowel tier, and this is a tier between the root and syllable tier. So when you first did linguistics and talked about syllable structures, you may have talked about onsets, nucleus, and coda, and attached them straight to sound segments, but this is not what we do anymore. Instead, what we do is we label C's and V's above consonants and vowels. So for instance, in doggy, in this transcription, you would have D is a consonant, V is a vowel, G is a consonant, and of course E is a vowel, and then you could build your syllables from there. So we could abbreviate something like doggy. And we can see a little bit more about syllable structure requirements. So for instance, in English, CV syllables are perfectly allowed. And of course, According to your language, you may have different syllable inventory. So for instance, in Mazateco, you can only have Vs, CVs, or CCVs. You can never have codas. In Spanish, of course, you can have V, CV, CCV, VC, CVC, or CCVC, but you can never have, say, two consonants in the coda. While English allows things such as two consonants in the onset and two consonants in the coda, or even three consonants in the coda. So we can talk about these syllable inventories with the CV tier very simply. But another thing, another practical thing, is that some languages like Japanese distinguish between short and long consonants. And how do we represent that? Well, we can represent it with the CV tier. So for instance, with the word hat, boshi, we can have CV, CV. And then we can link these one to one and then we can have our syllables, so bo, shi. Now, with a word like ashi, or chauffeur, well, we have this thing called a geminate, and this is a long consonant, essentially. So what we really have here is we have one syllable with a vowel and a consonant, and then we have another syllable with a consonant and a vowel. So the question is, well, how do we link this up? Well, essentially, we can say this is a VCCV. The vowels get connected to the vowels, but both of the Cs get connected to the same sound, and this allows a syllable structure where there's a distinction between short and long consonants. So you have something like bo shi, bo shi, and you have ashi, ashi. So the CV tier essentially allows this double linkage to the consonant. And now it's not as if a nucleus, or sorry, a syllable is sharing the same sound because the syllable is taking a C from the sound and the second syllable is taking a C from the sound. So these C's that they're taking are separate uh, objects. Okay, another really cool thing we can do with the CV tier is something called Arabic Templatic Morphology. And this is super exciting. I'm sure in any course you take with phonology or morphology, you'll talk about this at some point. Um, essentially with Arabic, you have a root meaning, and the root meaning is a consonant cluster. But the verbal morphology is done based on some sequence of vowels. So for instance, the word right would be something like ktb, but the perfect active verbal morphology would be something like a. Ah. And somehow out of that, we get this word katab. So how do we do this with the CV tier? Now this is incredibly, incredibly amazing. So what I want to do first is I want to take a look at these other examples. So we have katab, which is the perfect active, but with the imperfect active, we see katib. So we see that it's a and e, not a and a. So the underlying form for the imperfect active, what I'm thinking here, might be i. But how do we assign this? Same with daras and daris. Uh, again, we see the root here is just drs. And then with the perfect active, we have the a shoved in between the r and the d and the r and the s. And then with the imperfect active, we still have that a and e being distributed. Now, what about poison? Samam and samim. Well, in this case, really, we just have two consonants forming our root. And for some reason, when we only have two consonants, that last consonant in the word is also taking on that m. Mm. Okay, so 
it's not entirely clear what we can do here. However, if we separate this into three tiers, the root tier, the CV tier, and the vowel harmony, and we give it some CV, C, C, V, C structure, then we can figure out how to assign things. So here's kind of the rule how we do this. With vowel harmony, we want to link these vowels up to the Vs, and we'll do this one to one. So we'll always start left, we'll take the A to a V, and if there's no other vowel, so if we don't have this E here, then we'll just spread it to the remaining vowel. But because we have this E, we'll connect this E to the second vowel. Now with the root tier, we attach the K to the first consonant. The next consonant that comes is essentially doubled, so it will attach to the two C's. And then the final consonant, B, will attach to the final C. If this consonant B didn't exist, then the T would spread as well to the C. But, of course, we have the B here for Kat-Ib, therefore we will attach the B to the final consonant. And then we get our word, kat -ib. Now this is Arabic templatic morphology, and that's because we have a CV template that consonants and vowels are assigned to. So let's do the same example with the samam, meaning the perfect active poison. Okay, so a goes to the first V. We don't have any more vowels, so we'll put the a to the second V as well. The S will get attached to the verse C. The M will get attached to the next two C's, but there is no other consonants that we can attach to the third C, so that M is going to spread as well. And then we end up with samam. So that is the CV tier, and in phonology, it is useful, but I think it really shines in this one particular example of Arabic templatic morphology where you have this morphological component as well, because this system that Arabic uses is quite unique, and you don't see it pretty much anywhere else. So if you have any questions on the CV tier, please leave them in the comments below, and I will answer them as quickly as I can.